How's it going guys? Brian Cusco here, Triple B. Uh, today's going to be a kind of a long video, so I'm going to cut my little intro short here and we'll get straight into it. You're watching Triple B TV. Is that okay? Can you guys see the screen? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I can't see it. Can't see it at all. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't. I'm gonna. Well, there you go. Now it's now it's perfect, right? Oh yeah, I can see it. Oh my god. All right. So I'm usually a pretty quiet talker, so I'm gonna practice using my big boy voice tonight. You guys all hear that? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um. So. I was gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just paid my dues five minutes ago, so I'm now officially the newest member of the Too Slow California Turtle Fans. <laughs> uh, I may be the only member that doesn't actually have a turtle or tortoise, but <laughs> that's, that's going to change soon when I, uh, as soon as I meet the space requirements. So tonight I'm just basically going to give you a little autobiography and tell you a little bit about my history with reptiles as well as my uh, current involvement with the reptile community. Since this is a reptile club, I'm not going to go over basic snake facts or anything, but after I'm done talking, there'll be plenty of time for questions that any of you might have. So I grew up in Northern California, and that's pretty much where it ended. Oh, yeah. That was the best thing. Some of my earliest memories are centered on uh, a fascination with dinosaurs. <laughs> Um, I, I had dinosaur-themed birthday parties. I, uh, I was a dinosaur for Halloween uh, three years in a row. <laughs> I even had dinosaur bed sheets. And so, <laughs> so when I was uh, when I was four years old, I was playing in my backyard. Came across a California king snake crawling through the grass, and like a good little boy, I ran and got my dad, and he came back and affirmed that. It was a safe snake to handle. And then he later determined it was actually our neighbor's pet snake. And this was a man who was a, he was a biker. And his name, he actually went by the name Snake. And <laughs> <laughs> he had a bunch of animals in his living room that he was keeping his pets, a bunch of reptiles. And uh, in my little four-year-old mind at the time, I thought, this guy is living with dinosaurs. <laughs> and I was just mind blown by it. And luckily it didn't take much convincing to get my dad to buy me a snake. And so from my childhood all the way through my adulthood, I've kept many snakes, including this rat snake right here that I'm showing to my sister. And it's, so it's always been a joy of mine to show people snakes and see the reaction they have, which is sometimes not desirable. I just get a real joy of seeing them because they're amazing creatures and uh, helping people overcome their fears with them is one of my biggest joys. Uh, because the, 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 fears, the fears about snakes are most often based in a uh, misunderstanding in the true nature of these animals. I take them to, I take them to a school for show and tell, and I always just, always love showing. So this, this snake lived the longest. I had this snake from the age of seven until I was about 21. And right about that time, uh, I also became a professional musician. And that profession landed me in Hawaii for about 10 years. And Hawaii is, <laughs> it was a tough gig, it was a tough gig. Because uh, Hawaii is really a beautiful, beautiful place. And it's, it's truly amazing. I mean, I loved everything about that place except for one thing. And it's, there's no snakes in Hawaii. No snakes in Hawaii. There are, however, these, these guys, these Hawaiian green sea turtles. And they're amazing creatures. And they helped me uh, maintain my fascination with reptiles while I was there overseas. So also in Hawaii, I met my wife. On our honeymoon, I discovered I had a pretty good eye for photography. <laughs> and so that became a, a, a passion of mine that also became a part-time job. This shot of Hanama Bay, as well as many other shots I've taken, are hanging on the walls of people from Hawaii all the way to New York to Belgium. This shot is currently being used by a nonprofit organization called the Ocean Conservancy. Much to my camera's delight, we decided to take a little trip around the world for a while. This is uh, Santorini, Greece. And uh, that's St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. 
This one's pretty obvious, I think. It's not Vegas. <laughs> and once we were done traipsing around the world, we decided that we were ready to have kids, and so we did. And once we started having kids, we wanted to be back close to family, close to grandma and grandpa. Since I'm from Northern California and my wife is from Southern California, the Central Coast seemed like the perfect compromise. And uh, that's actually, that's when I kind of found you guys, which has been awesome because you guys run a great club here. And so now that we're back in California, I knew it was time, I, just time to get back into snakes in a big way. <laughs> this animal actually belongs to a, a man named Brian Gundy. And Brian has been keeping uh, reptiles for decades and decades. And his full-time job is actually educating people about reptiles. He goes to schools, does events. Um, so he was one of the first people I came into contact with when I moved back to California. A great guy. So it's kind of my dream to follow in his footsteps and do what he does. And I knew that to do that, I would need to get at least a snake. And one snake turned into two snakes. Two snakes turned into three snakes. And then that snowballed into more snakes. And over the past year and a half or so, I've amassed a, a crew of about 26 snakes. I want to talk a little bit about another group I belong to. It's called the U.S. Ark. I'm wearing the shirt here. It's the United States Association of Reptile Keepers. I don't know if you've heard of them or not, but they are currently fighting a lawsuit uh, against the Lacey Act, a, a new law that was passed under the Lacey Act by the federal government. Uh, that law basically outlaws the transportation of these snakes across state lines. So say, for example, somebody in North Dakota has a sick animal and the nearest vet to them is in South Dakota on the other side of the state line. If they take that animal across that line, they've just committed a felony under this law. Well, the ration, it's based on bad science, essentially. The, the claim is that these animals, if they got loose, would become an invasive species in the states. Now see, but the facts are that these animals would not survive a single season outdoors in the states. With the, Right, that is the rationale, but, and that is, and that is the rationale. And, um, and that's true, with the exception of South Texas and Southern Florida, are the only places that those snakes can actually thrive. So to, you know, pass a law across the entire nation to transport them across state lines is a bit of a federal overreach. And um, just certain species, certain species, yes. And I, I want to mention another group, um, Humane Society of the United States, you've probably heard of them. They have lots of commercials and they, they do really big on fundraising. They're actually one of the groups that helped lobby for that act to pass. Something a lot of people don't necessarily know about the Humane Society of the United States is they're not actually connected with the local humane societies. Most of the money they bring in doesn't actually go to helping animals. Only 5% of their income goes to actually helping animals. The rest of it goes to pay high salaries for the officers, pensions, I'm sorry if any of you uh, belong to the Humane Society of the United States, but if you do, abandon ship because they're, they're swindlers. But they, they had a big hand in, in getting this passed, and their, their kind of end game is to restrict uh, human and animal interaction entirely. And that sounds pretty extreme, but that's, that's kind of their goal, is to, you know, dogs, cats, anything. That's, that, like I said, it sounds extreme, but that's kind of what they're pushing for. So the U.S. ARC is, has been fighting that, and they're doing a good job of actually winning the lawsuit. That law is getting repealed um, as we speak, which is kind of huge for the people because the, the federal government is kind of tough to stand up against. I also want to highlight a couple other guys here. Uh, Brian Barczyk out of Michigan, and Jay Brewer from Southern California. Uh, these guys single-handedly expose hundreds of thousands of people to the reptile-keeping hobby. They're, they're, good guys to, they're good guys to be out there. They're kind of my mentors. Now, as, as far as keeping snakes goes, I know that for many people, it's hard to understand and accept these creatures. And I, I understand why. You know, they're not, they're not cute and cuddly like turtles and tortoises are. So, <laughs> um, so I can understand why some people are standoffish. You know, the way they move and crawl through the grass can be a little unnerving. You know, our mammalian ancestors have been on the menu for millions of years. <laughs> uh, but my goal, my goal really is to help you understand that there's nothing more to fear from these animals than any other animal, really. And they can bring enjoyment to everyone from a little two-year-old 
to grandma and grandpa. My goal is always to see a face go from this <laughs> to something more like this, which just it warms my heart every time I see that face. Uh, uh, Colette, I don't mean to signal you out, but I guess I do. But I, I know you. <laughs> but I, I know you have a pretty deep-rooted fear of snakes, and it's uh, it's kind of a goal. Yes, I see you over there hiding your face. Well, I, I thought Colette had the big fear, but I, I've, I've seen you with your face covered the entire time. So, so I've got two two big uh, hurdles to cross here. I, I may never cross them. I'm a very patient man. But um, <laughs> um, but it would be kind of a dream. <laughs> would be, I got one too, buddy. <laughs> it would be kind of a dream come true to uh, see that face when you're holding a snake. <laughs> so it, it, here, I've got, I've got some relief coming up for you right now. It's, there you go. No, no, it's, it's relief. <laughs> um, so this is going to end the part of my presentation where I'm talking at you guys. And uh, I may not see some of you until next month, so I just wanted to say Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, thanks, guys, uh, for listening. And I brought a few animals uh, if anybody wants to check them out. Or if you guys have any questions, any, um, I'll answer any questions you guys have. Yes. That, what kind of uh, snake? That's a uh, clown piebald ball python. It's two different genes. The clown is a recessive trait, and the piebald is a recessive trait, much like a, you know, see piebald in horses and a lot of other animals. So it's two recessive traits. And yeah, she is. Um, how big is the biggest one I have? Um, well, she's not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> But she's only actually about uh, about four feet long or so, maybe not maybe not even four foot yet, something like this. Um, and she weighs close to 1,500 grams, so she's about half size. Females get about twice as big as males, so once she once she reaches uh, 3,000 grams, she'll be about four. Yes, sir. I just wanted to say that, uh, that I think you've got a really good eye with your camera. Auto shot, you're nicely composed. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's what I aim for, so I shoot for. <laughs> Are you um, well, I can bring my guitar to the Christmas party, and you can make oh, yeah. you can make that decision. You make that decision for yourself. <laughs> I can do anything from heavy metal to uh, you know some Christmas music. Maybe. I, I play uh, I play music for my animals and any animals I have. I'm planning to get a tortoise once I have the, the proper space. I just we're renting right now and we're in escrow on some land. And once that goes through, then definitely planning to get a tortoise. Brandon. So how's your wife feel about snakes? My wife, funny. My wife used to have nightmares about worms and snakes, and now this woman will go to the snake cage and take them out by herself, unprodded. This is, like I said, this is a lady who had nightmares about snakes. Um, and there's, I've seen it happen with a lot of people too, which is kind of why I know it, it can be done. Like my, my uh, brother-in-law, for example, I, he didn't know I had snakes in the house when we were all living at my parents' house about a year and a half ago. And um, I forgot that he was coming home and I was sitting out in the living room with one. And he walks in, looks, and backs up against the door and goes, what is that doing here? <laughs> and um, by the end of the next week or two, he was sitting there holding the snake by himself. And then a week after that, he came in and he's like, I was holding the snake since I knew he was okay with it now. And he says, okay, hey, can I see that? Can I see that? And you know, this is a guy that was like, well, you know, the reaction was just like, no, this is not happening. <laughs> I had a young foster boy that, that lived with us who had a couple of snakes and he had um, a yellow python thing. But he says, oh no, they don't bite, they don't bite. Next thing I know, he's calling me on the phone, collecting me from one and bring a bottle of booze with you. I said, what's the booze? 
well, maybe vodka or, or rum, anything that doesn't matter. I said, why? He goes, because my snake won't let me go. And when I got home, the snake had bitten his finger and was trying to ingest his finger. He must have been handling a rat or what? You I, I don't wonder know what, what kind of was. Yeah, mouthwash usually works pretty good. But the thing is, somebody tells you snakes can't, aren't going to bite is anything with a mouth yeah. will bite. bite. Yeah. yeah. And, and this, this snake was eating his finger. And I, you know, that's all it took for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's usually a pretty amateur mistake, um, you know, for, to let your fake snake have a feeding response on you. Because that's, that's a feeding response bite. If he's trying yeah. to eat his finger, and I've seen it happen. It's usually after somebody's holding, you know, their food or something and just kind of goes right in the cage and it's usually a baby snake. There you go. You're supposed to, you're supposed to use tongs when you're doing that kind of thing. You know, keep a little distance. Yeah, there, there are a lot of people out there. It's unfortunate because usually when something negative happens with the snakes, it immediately goes to the media and that's, that's all you ever see in the media is, oh, the snake killed somebody. When, it, you know, the fact is there's one, I think, uh, on average, one death from a snake a year in the States, you know. Um, that's not necessarily venomous bites, but from like a big snake or something. Um, I have one boa and the rest are pythons. Um, when I was growing up, I had mostly colubrids, and corn snakes and rat snakes and green rough snakes. But um, yeah, now I have mostly pythons. Um, boas give live birth. And pythons lay eggs. That's the main difference. They are both constrictors, yes. That is the question that I love people to ask because you would think so. You would think so. I don't actually know what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, there's, several, there's several different, there's options, it, it changes, it's fluid. I'm trying to get to something, yeah, no, I'm trying to get something better for you over here. There it is. <laughs> Ball. <laughs> Ball pythons, ball pythons. <laughs> Any other questions? No, let's see some snakes. Yeah, yeah, let's see them. Oh, oh, she's fine. You can just grab her out. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Snakes are wrapping around you, Mike. This one just settled down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Burmese pythons. And they call it a bat eater. Yeah, she's about due for a soak. Isn't she cute? <laughs> the the uh, trees do. <laughs> so they come out. They look almost white against the dark foliage. Okay. I've, I've never gone to chameleon hunting. It sounds like an amazing experience. <laughs> The biggest shock I had was I turned it. We were in this big truck that was up pretty high. And I, I'm looking up and everything, and I shine the light down. There's a lion right, right next to the road. <laughs> just standing there looking at me. I just. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be incredible. Just, I couldn't believe it. Oh, that's a baby ball python. Well, finally, you stuck your tongue out. Well, I hope that wasn't too long and drawn on for you guys. I just kind of wanted to give you a little glimpse of uh, what I got myself into there. 
it was a great thing to be able to expose those people to snakes like that. They just, and really, that's, that's my goal, is to get everybody loving snakes. And one person at a time, a little group at a time, it doesn't matter. Um, every little bit counts to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you next week.